Okay, we are installing Brunch OS on a laptop using an Intel 7th Gen CPU. Brunch OS does not support this. However, Google does support Chromebooks until I think it's 26 or 27 that do use the older Intel CPU. So we're using the Ramus recovery. Um, that is our least worst choice. There's a good chance that it will still work, even though it's well, I'm, you're running Chrome OS unofficially anyway, right? So you're just adding on top of that with the fact that Brunch OS doesn't support it. So you're just increasing, you know, the, the normal, your mileage may vary disclaimer caveat, right? Anyway, let's take a quick peek at what we are dealing with. And I'm using an external display on a laptop. Extra weird for me, but hopefully this makes it easier for you to see. Oops, it's not what we wanted. Derp. A little hard for me to see. Ah, fuck. There we go. Now, we're using um, the Antix Linux distribution, and it comes up in demo mode. So, password is demo, all lowercase. Um, and the reason we're playing with antics today is that the ISO is only two gigabytes in size. Lubuntu's ISO is over three gigs for the full version with all of the apps. It's good to have options when you're trying to cram Linux onto a crowded stick, right? So the destination is going to be SDA, and that's common in a lot of devices. Now, our thumb drive... So this is a Ventoy stick. This is another Ventoy test. Um, I've created a 32 gigabyte persistent storage partition on it. And you can play with Ventoy. Um, maybe that deserves its own video. But how this works is we're booting Antex from Ventoy. And then Antex can mount the partition in the stick that it booted from, which is kind of nice. Um, you know, and if you're not, if you don't really care about the Ventoy, you certainly don't need to overcomplicate things. Like, this is probably complicated if you're not familiar with Ventoy. You could certainly just boot any Linux distribution that's compatible with the, the, the Debian, Debian packages and the apt-get stuff. And then put another stick or some other storage medium with the Brunch OS stuff, right? I mean, there's a lot of ways to doing it. This is just me doing more Ventoy tests. Um, anyway. And... I am using the laptop's keyboard and touchpad. I want to test that with Antix too. It's a little weird, but... Um, so here's the data partition. Here is the Brunch OS source files. Um, and okay so you get a good view of I will put in the description the two files that I used to build this. Um, but really quick, this, this, this. So here, 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 and here. These four files come from the Brunch OS project. This is downloaded from Google. I renamed it so it wasn't like 80 characters long. Um, I forget where I originally read and found this script. That's what we're going to be using. I'm going to execute the lines manually so we can watch what happens. I've been having some weird wonkiness with the, the Debian packages. And that's a problem that you have with this stuff. Um, the installer requires some stuff that's not on there by default always. And it's good to pay attention to the debug output, right? 
So Okay. Derp. I, I'm having a real hard time seeing the screen from this angle. And on prior attempts, I was getting a whole bunch of weird, um, they looked like DNS errors, uh, the inability to resolve to Debian.org. Um, now, that is something that you won't deal with if you install Brunch OS the, via the official method. But this method plays nice with Ventoy. So there's trade-offs, right? Always good to have options. And I've already upgraded this in the past, so that's why it's skipping some of this, but these are the steps that you're gonna to wanna to take. I mean, you can try and just run the script too, um, I don't recommend it, but because there's not that many entries. The UI is not that great um, in antics. I will say, though, look at this. Even after enabling my network connection, it's only using like 280 megs, 289, 88. I can't see it from here, but not a lot of RAM. That's insanely small. And this is why I renamed the recovery bin. This is long enough. And there's some weirdness with the touchpad, right clicking stuff, not working the way it should consistently, but. What the fuck? Um, and again, I'm familiar with his hardware. Your hardware is gonna be different and you may or may not use SDA, right? for your use case. All right, and here is your standard Chrome Chromium installer stuff. For some reason on this laptop, it the USB ports are underperforming under um, antics i'm not sure what's going on could be a driver issue this is slower than i would expect on this type of hardware but you get what you get huge your mileage may vary When Brunch OS works, um, it is definitely probably the most polished way for you to run just basic internet access and Android apps on generic hardware. I mean, there's going to be instances, right? It's not Android, but it's pretty darn good, and it's a nice user experience. Um, and I've mentioned in prior videos that, you know, of course, there's like Bliss OS and Fido OS and other ways to do it. But this is great when it works 
because you're basically stuffing a generic Linux kernel into Chrome OS, which normally uses a highly optimized specialized kernel just for the hardware you're using, there's going to be some trade-offs, but it's worth playing with. And the update process can be weird, too, um, compared to just you know something automatic. If you don't care about Android apps, Google Flex OS, or, the, or Chrome OS Flex, whatever they're calling it now, um, super neat, too, an amazing hardware support. And these OSs are super great. This is a great OS for like um, older all-in-ones, which you can find cheap because there's years of them where, <clears throat> excuse me, they were underpowered and had shitty slow mechanical drives. And if you can get one where it's easy to swap out the mechanical drive with a small SSD and put this on it, um, yeah. And I'm not getting into the touchscreen type stuff, right? That's a whole other issue, whether you want that or not. And the OS is the deal with that. But as far as just having like um, like a kitchen computer, makes a great gift for like your mom or someone who just wants, you know, something in the kitchen. So this is definitely, the speed is related to USB weirdness. The CPU is plenty fast for this use case. All right, let's do the first boot, shall we? Oh, shit. And there you go.